Today I'm going to take you through my favourite topic, InfoPath Forms, and I'm going to just start, help you get started with InfoPath. So let's start now by going new and blank form and create a blank form and have a look at some of the controls that would get you on your way. So we're going to design the form. So when you open a blank form, uh, it's a clean slate and it just starts with click to add a title and to add tables. Let's have a look at the page design and page layout templates to start with. That gives us a good idea of how we might want to start this. So we can choose from some of the pre-formatted designs and I think there's enough in here really to, to cover most cases. So let's do one with title and heading. Uh, and as you can see, that's just added on another section to my page. There's so many wonderful colors to choose from with the forms. I like something that's very simple, very clean looking and um, with a minimum of color. But look, so many options here to play with. Just a few that, that are coming straight out of the box. And we're going to format some of these and add some controls. So where it says click to add title, you just add your title. Let's make this a new employee form. We can add tables there. And the first thing we might want to collect from our new employee is uh, their name and address details. So we'll put that personal information. And you can have a subheading. I'm just making this up as I go along. But what we might want to do, for example, is have a table on the page. So we insert a table. And again, we have all of these pre-formatted tables coming straight out of the box. How about one that looks like this? So we have our label that we're going to add here straight onto the page and we're going to add our controls to the right. And I just simply dragged and dropped that to make less space. So we might add our surname, for example. We might have first name. We might have phone number. And I just, I'm just tabbing through date of birth. And how about uh, we make them fill in their age. We could calculate that automatically, but just keep it simple today. And uh, what else would include in personal information? Current job. That's enough to get started with. Then we simply drag and drop our controls onto the page. Or, as you can see, the cursor is already in place next to surname here. We're just going to click on the text box, go up to the ribbon and you see text box and click on it and one drops onto the page. Now when that happens, you'll see that the fields have, have already changed over here at the same time. So we have a blank field called field one and there it is over here in our metadata list. So let's do that for first name, same again, text box phone number, again a text box, date of birth, we might make that a date and time picker. We wouldn't want the time, but we'll fix that up later. Age, another text box, and current job. So now we have six fields on the page, and they're basically blank fields. I'm just going to delete some of this blank space up the top here. There we go. You could add your logo and modify that but we're not going to get too fancy with this. So what you have now are a number of blank fields on your page. Now these are not formatted in any shape or form, but they are fields that you can, text fields that you can start typing straight into. If you right click on each field and look at the text box properties, you have the option of giving your field a name. And we always do that. We don't leave blank fields or field one, field two. It's meaningless. And if we start using this in SharePoint sites, uploading it and using the metadata, nobody knows what field one actually contains. Uh, I have forms that run into thousands of pieces of metadata, so it would not be any use at all to me to have a field called field 156. So I'm going to call this surname very descriptive, tells me what I need to know. Now for other types of fields, I might actually preface that with, if it's a radio button, I might let, let people know that it's a radio button by putting RB 
in front of it. And there's a number of ways of naming your fields and there's some very good practice that I would recommend that you get into to identify that. Plain text fields, I always just leave, um, I don't actually identify in any particular way. This is a text string. If you look, there's, it could be a whole number, it could be a decimal, a true, false, a date, and you have further options of formatting that if you choose one of the other options. The default value, you could type something in here, such as please enter your surname. I rarely use that in a text box. I might, in fact, choose to use a place placeholder instead. So instead of having a value, because I really want that to be empty, I would put a placeholder in. This means that this particular bit of text, please type your surname, is not going to be saved as metadata with the form, and that's important to know. Whereas anything I type in here in value is going to be saved as metadata. And we don't want a person whose name is please type in your surname. Going back to display, you can make these multi-line or limit the text box to a certain number of characters. You can change the alignment left to right or center. Uh, you can change the size of your text box. One thing I always recommend people to do is put a screen tip in. This is a mouse over. And this, is, this makes for good accessibility for your form. So I would write here. which is just duplicating what's already in the placeholder, but once the placeholder is typed over, the screen tip will still be showing. And you have a tab index. Now, if you want to navigate people through the form in a particular way, and as you tab through the form, that will show the order in which the fields are tabbed into. Browser forms, we're not going to touch that for the moment. So we're not going to give it any rules. We're not going to say, tick here that it cannot be blank and we're just going to say apply and then click OK. So what you have here is a warning because this is not web browser compatible and you have, it's just saying that placeholder text will not be displayed when the form is edited in a web browser. So it's just important to know that some web browser forms, or, sorry all web browser forms function slightly differently to an InfoPath form. So if somebody is, has the InfoPath client on their lap, on their desktop, they will have more functionality than if you web enable this form and then save that as a web enabled form. You lose some of your functionality. Going ho over onto the right here, now that we see that this new field called surname has is appears here. And you would go through and do that for all your fields so that they all have unique names. Let's just look at the date of birth field, and right click and look at the date picker properties. It's currently formatted as date and time, so let's I'll call it date of birth, DOB, and I'm going to reformat that so it's just showing, it's not actually going to dis display the time, and it will say display the date in that format. And to give it a screen tip, Maybe please enter your date of birth and apply it. OK, and then you can go ahead and delete that time field out. You can dra drag and drop these to resize them. And you can choose a number at a time by pressing shift. And that will drag and drop at the same time as well to have them all the same size. So this is the very, very basics of an InfoPath form. Let's go up and have a look at preview to see what it will look like on the screen. So you get the instruction to please type in your surname and you can type straight over that. And then you tab through to continue on. Now there's so many ways of working with these fields and I just wanted to give you a quick introduction, as I said, to how you would work with these. I'm just choosing today's date just to give you a little bit of a sneak pre preview into getting started. So I'm going to close the preview and that's all about working with text fields in a new InfoPath form. If you have any questions, it's www.p3connect.com.au and I'm happy to respond. Thank you.